Hi guys, good afternoon, happy Sunday. Hope you've all had a, a nice weekend. Uh, happy 4th of July Independence Day to those in the US. Uh, and also happy opening of the pubs in the UK. Hope you've all enjoyed yourselves uh, for those that went. Um, we'll go through the charts as, as normal, one by one. Um, going through some of the levels from last week, how they reacted. Uh, and some new ones for the week ahead. Obviously, with Friday being a bank holiday in the States, of course, uh, for the futures market, uh, you won't see any price action for that day. Uh, so effectively, it's been a, a long weekend. And, and how that acts out, we'll, we'll find out on the on the open on, on uh, well, this evening. Of course, the last three Sundays have had a gap lower, which was quickly reversed, of, of course. But, uh, yeah, we'll have a, have a little run through starting off as usual with the euro um and that low that we had from a couple of mondays ago still very much intact let me just remove uh, these arrows so yeah still very much intact the, the the balls for me are in control as long as we're above there um and you can see we, we are so at the moment I think it's worthwhile just sort of pointing that out that for a, a, a decent move lower we really do need to get ourselves below these these two lines that I've marked up um, the, the sort of the the line in the sand if you like which you can see I've, I've had marked up here quite interestingly I think and I'm just gonna remove it we we couldn't get any closes above there you know going back since we we broke through on the 25th of June you can see we had a couple of goes last week but no close above there, which is, for me, quite interesting. Of course, we're into a new quarter, into a new month, uh, which sort of led to some erratic price action, shall we say, last uh, last week or the beginning of last week. But but now it's almost like, you know, business um, can can resume as normal. So I'll be looking for some cleaner moves uh, to come. So for the euro, for the bulls, this is the still the point that is needed to defend. Uh, I guess you could you, you could argue that the the bears can really only get excited uh, below the one eleven sixty because obviously what could happen is that we do push lower and that just you know is still in control of the bulls and uh, and we push uh, push up from this point so I think we, we you know having a look at this yeah below one eleven sixty uh, is how I'd be be looking at the euro so to the upside well. You know you've got these these highs so to to get you know from a horizontal point of view just terms of the the key resistance levels obviously we still got this one up here we've got this trend line that comes down but uh yeah in between here it, it's a tricky one because it's likely to get quite messy however for like a, a daily sort of guide level i would have this one on which was the the high of the pullback after we broke lower on the 26th so yeah, that for me is is, is worthwhile having a one twelve eighty uh, is that level. So no close above there. So a close above would be significant enough for me to kind of like uh, a move to the upside. But it's like the uh, the Aussie in a way, isn't it? In that it's been compact really for a number of weeks. It's almost waiting for a bigger move to happen. Uh, might be worth having a just a quick look to see from these highs. Have we got a trend line? coming down so a quick look there you go it's not too bad not too bad i keep that on along with that high especially if we were to get that early in the week it may well coincide with that trend uh, but yeah those would be the points to the upside to the downside uh you know it, it's i guess the thing to do is is make this more of a sort of a demand zone uh, and as long as we don't close below that then I'd say the, the, the bulls can, can still be in control of this uh, overall. Ultimately, if we were to move lower for a period of time, I think you know this certainly still looks like a very good place to get long again. Uh, but we've been, we've been compressed, haven't we, over the last couple of weeks. Not, really, not too much has happened. Uh, but like I was saying, new quarter, new month. You know, let's, uh, let's hopefully see some cleaner moves. For the pound, um, decent decent couple of days uh, followed after we, we couldn't push lower on the 29th. So the 30th, which of course was the Thursday, a bit of you know month end flow. Uh, people were 
uh, on Tuesday, sorry, was a bit of month end flow. Uh, and yeah, we, we pushed on and, and a bit of risk on as well. In, in seen stocks did push higher into the back end of the week uh, as well. Um, so areas to be aware of, certainly, you know, you've got to be marking up this 125.46, which capped price action on the Thursday. I mean, how we finished on, on Thursday uh, was, you know, would it, I, I would say look relatively bearish for a reversal, but Friday, you know, there was hardly any volume in the market. So, uh, yeah, not too much going on there. So having a look at this now, I, I would obviously mark up the, the key low. You know, that's been very important. And if you remember from last week's video, or if you ever watch the, the midday ones I do on, on Amplify Live, it just came back down to the most important level for pound that I've been on about is this area here, we broke above it, came back down, then we broke and actually closed, and it offered an area of support for the push higher, and we just came back down to it, to it there. So yeah, you know, you should, if you wanna see how important uh, that technical level is, there you go. Uh, so to the upside, 125.46, give or take a, a couple of pips either way, resisting any move to the upside and then uh, 22.65 uh, to the downside. Uh, bit a big, quite a big range, admittedly. You know, 300, uh, you know, pips. But putting this on to sort of 60 minutes, just having a look at some other areas of interest. Let's just have a quick look. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it, it actually, you know, led to a pretty good push, didn't it? Even after that first down the first. I'm just wondering whether you probably want to have this area here now. You can see it was the low that we had back on the 25th, broke, closed above, offered a, a half decent level. I, I would have it as a bit of a guide and also it, it matches up quite nicely with the sort of midpoint. So, you know, you can say we're bullish uh, as long as we, you know, su find support here and, and stay above, bearish below and obviously then be aware of this key level uh, and the levels we marked up last week. And most notably these lows whereas if this turns to support and we push higher and get above the what is now of course a double top then really we could be looking back towards that 200 day moving average again which has been you know, pretty good and, and worthwhile having on uh, there for the pound um, bit of bit brexit talk starting to, to come into you know the the headlines a bit more as well but also it, it is still correlated quite heavily with um, with risk. So obviously if we were to have a positive week for stocks, then uh, likelihood is you're gonna see the pound follow suit where any risk off, just be aware that this can change and, and turn. And, and to be honest, you know, it's actually been probably the nicest currency in my opinion to have traded recently. The Euro, you know, pretty messy along with the pound, uh, along with the Aussie dollar, I should say, but the, the pound has traded quite nice, respected levels well, and you're getting decent moves uh, that are at least lasting for a bit. Uh, moving on to the Aussie, we got a little break, didn't we? We had this uh, trend line from the top coming in, got uh, a little spike above. We then found support. I guess if you were to zoom in, you probably did get a nice close and it acts as support again and, we, and we're pushing to the upside. So we're now removed 69.33. Uh, and then, yeah, just have this double top. Now we're looking at towards 69.82 above there. Obviously, you have the high of the 11, which you probably were marking up because it comes in on the handle, the 70 handle. But above there, then we're looking towards the high uh, that we made, of course, on the 10th. If it is a false break, uh, where do I believe that to be? 68.98, I think is as good as any, you know, back below here. But of course, this retest of the trend could well come, of course, lower down than that as well. So just bear that in mind. And also the trend line that we've got coming up. So that's going to be, if we are to have a move lower, quite a, a key point. But are we worth, be worth uh, marking up. But... Has much happened in that other than that little break? No, not really. So the pound has been easier. The euro still contained. Have we now got a bit of a break here and we can continue higher? Last week's finish would suggest that is going to happen from from just sort of looking at this. Uh, however, we're, we're effectively a spike away from coming into very key resistance. So just be aware of that if you are long. You know, this is a good level where I would say take profit and then your, your next target is that high that we've got from the 10th, uh, which of course is 
the higher the year as well, just making sure it was. Um, yeah, and then obviously if it any more on, it could run through. However, you know, stops, I would say, it's a tricky one, isn't it? Because, you know, you've got this trend line which would act as support, you've got this level here, and um, it might well be in that the risk reward is skewed a bit. So, yeah, I, I'd say if I were looking for a long, I'd be happy as long as it is above this trend line that comes from those lows. Um, yeah, we, we talked last week about how the 200 day moving average would be a nice place to get long. Um, that hasn't come come through yet, but it's certainly one to you know maybe make a note on and just sort of say you know if we if we do get near it, it's acted very well as a support or resistance um, recently. So yeah, let's uh, still have that on. Moving on to to stocks, uh, good recovery again last week. The bears can't really really catch up. Um, catch it can they at the moment We're, but you know not to say the bulls have, have taken this away you know it's probably moved, clear this up a bit yeah I mean, you can see the resistance here from the 23rd is good obviously looks slightly different than how we would probably live from the futures obviously once that rollover took place but we still got you know key resistance up here which you're going to have on obviously now just moving that to there You've got these highs that we couldn't get through, so definitely looking to have that on uh, as well. Then to the downsides, you've got the previous high, which has acted as a really good opportunity to have got long a couple of times. And, and it, you know, this time, well, I did it on the Saturday, but basically seven days ago, I was talking about how we are just coming back into you know, a really nice area in equities to get long from a technical point of view. We found support, we filled the gap from the Sunday close, and, and we did push higher. Uh, does that last? You know, we'll have to wait and see, of course. But I'd still be a buyer in this market if we can get any any uh, sort of pullbacks. I added a bit to, to my long, as you know, I'm down here, um, and I, I just you know not a massive trade at all, but de-risked ahead of um, ahead of the the bank holiday before non-farm payrolls on the uh, sort of the high that we had here. I mean, in hindsight, it looks great. But, um, you know, we could easily smash through that. So the way I'd be looking for that is a close above here. Nice sort of pullback, you know, something like from there. And then looking for that high that we had back in the beginning of June. To the downside, where would I be a bit worried that actually we, we start to see 29.76 again? Probably when we get a close below 30.83. That would be enough that I'd say, okay, maybe we're just going to start this, you know, rotation round to these lows again however of course all of these lows from the first the 30th uh, as well could act as support points for that that rally to continue to the upside well, i say rally uh, push that we've had in in recent times so yeah that's that's really how i'd play it targets to the upside you know you've got these previous tops from the 16th Obviously, people will be looking at the futures higher than 19th but as i said we had that rollover so it looks slightly different can we get a great week and get above this high? Probably not. But if that is to happen, just as we've said in previous ones, just start marking these areas up. Uh, as we saw on the NASDAQ not long ago, they really do act as, as great targets, great resistance levels, albeit momentarily. But why take that risk? Great places to de-risk. Um, also, you might have seen on the news, Kanye West is, is saying he's going to run for uh, the presidency, probably more of a plea or a plan, I should say, to, to take votes away from, from Biden, if anything, and the attention away, but uh, 2020, right? Uh, but yeah, that's that's how I would go with the S&P, really. You know, I'm bullish still above 3083, I mean, overall, as long as we stay above 2976, I am, but maybe for the week as it goes, you know, this is a good line in the sand. Uh, that I would hold on there. NASDAQ made new all-time highs, closing all-time high as well, so um, no surprise there. We're still in this trend channel as a bit of a guide that I would have. As you know, we uh, last week we did exactly what uh, we were saying and coming back to these previous highs, technically what a level to get long, and it, and it was. Uh, and it has been for quite some time, just following this trend line as well. So yeah, great opportunity for, for those that got in. Uh, and also, you know, we, we hit the high, we find some resistance there, great place to de-risk, and if it goes, fantastic. 
Uh, now begs the question, let's just remove those arrows after that worked pretty well. You would just be saying, you know, where is the next dip? I would say this is too early on the, the previous all-time high. Personally, I think you'd, you'd want it a bit lower. Uh, line in the sand, for me, you would probably have about 10,000 10, 10, NASDAQ. That sounds mad, doesn't it? Uh, just above these highs here. You'd be happy to stay long. Uh, but I think if it does break there, and that's similar to the, the S&P line in the sand that I've got, 3083, you know, I'd, I'd you say, yeah, uh, if you're if you are long, if you're managing a position, you know, I'd be happy to stay long above that. However, I think the break below there just gives another opportunity on this trend as well. If you if, you, if you're bearish, uh, below that trend's not a bad bad one to sort of get that added confirmation that you might want because at the moment it's you know try piece together two down days in a row on the Nasdaq and the futures. You you haven't had that since. 13th and 12th of May, which is incredible to think about. Dow Jones, uh, yeah, it, it, it did what the NASDAQ did, it did what the DAX did, it did what the S&P did, and it come down to a previous area which offered resistance to support and, and led to that next move uh, as well. So yeah, it's uh, nice to see the markets behaving themselves giving opportunities to both buyers and sellers because obviously for these levels to work a part of that is, is going to come from people taking profit um, relatively quiet into the week though it has to be said for, for equities with it being a, a four day week uh, looks quite messy now for me the Dow personally it's uh, from a um, you know getting in for maybe a couple of days three four or five days at a time S&P and NASDAQ have certainly felt a lot clearer um, but was this the opportunity to get long on those lows? Potentially was, wasn't it? Uh, to the upside, obviously we got the 200 day moving average. I'd say worth keeping an eye on. Uh, however, the main target here, I think people we'll be looking at will be the high that we had back on the 16th, just below the 27,000 mark. Um, moving that, I don't know. I, I, I don't really want to spend too much time looking at the Dow. Really choppy around here. I think lower time frames it could be you know, slightly clearer but with those lower time frame you know uh, charts you're looking at lower time frame levels so I don't know I, I think we I don't know I just, like I said I think the S&P and NASDAQ are clearer uh, would I I'd, I'd say we, we drift higher and the line I, 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 yeah, I mean looking at this I don't, know. don't really have a, a line in the sand that would give me a guide. Obviously, the, the S&P and Nasdaq are, you know, a bit uh, clearer for me. Trend line on there, probably not worth having on. So yeah, I mean, for for the Dow, if I wasn't in a position, which I'm not, I'm only really interested when it comes to here or there, really. I mean, you could, of course, lower it down and say we haven't finished below here in, you know, three days. We broke above it, turned to a great area of support for a push higher. It's worthwhile, I guess, having that on. We found relatively good price action away, but you can see I'm reaching really for for the Dow here. So yeah, maybe not not worth um, yeah too much attention, in my opinion. Anyway, gold uh, we did get 1800, didn't we? We did get 1800 last week. We got the the push above, coming back for support. I mean, I was talking about this with the guys last week end of last week um, one second I think uh, I've just been logged logged off there uh, unfortunately so I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it there um, rather than uh, spend uh, time to sort of logging in again because uh, I think Anthony's about to do the macro menu uh, but I will uh, put a couple of charts up for gold and the DAX I only had those two left uh, so no no problems there uh, but yeah I was just saying of gold there's a really nice level in there that was a good line in sand for me for whether it be bullish or bearish and how it finished bearish, uh, bullish sorry uh, enough for me above there um, but yeah hope uh, you guys all have a great week and uh, yeah I'll catch you all uh, later on we're doing a, a webinar I think this Wednesday actually so keep a, a look out for that uh, but yeah, hope you'll have a, a good few days ahead um, and hope the weekend was good and you're all rest and recovered uh, and ready. Take care, guys.